One of the most mysterious men ever to be recorded in the Bible is Elijah. He was a prophet of great difference. Elijah was a man who had no beginning and end. His beginning was shrouded in the lines of the Bible. No one knows where he originated from, and at the time of his departure, he never tasted death. Did you know that without Elijah, the Lord Jesus would not have started or completed his journey to save the world according to God's plan? Elijah is a man of great importance and relevance to the purpose of God in both the Old and New Covenant. Make sure you watch this video to the end, to know Elijah in a way you have never heard in any sermon. Before we go into detail about this prophet called Elijah, if you have not subscribed to this channel, yet kindly do so now, and like this video, it helps us reach more blessed people like you. Prophet Elijah is arguably the greatest prophet in the Bible because without Elijah, the Lord Jesus would not have been introduced to the world. Among all the prophets of the Old Covenant who spoke about the coming of the Lord and longed to see that day, Elijah was the only one who saw and participated in the fulfillment of the salvation of the world. The Bible says before the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, Elijah will come to prepare the way for him. We see this in Malachi 4 verse 5. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Jesus confirmed this by himself and said in Matthew 11 verses 12 through 14, And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John, and if you are willing to receive it, he is Elijah who is to come. Now, as it was about time for Jesus to conclude his assignment, Elijah came back to him in the Mount of Transfiguration representing the prophetic and the voice of God, which God used as a certification of what Jesus came to do on earth. If you need a comprehensive explanation, you can check out my video titled, Why Elijah and Moses Appeared to Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration. Elijah was a man whose relevance was not only reflected in the list of biblical prophets, but he also disrupted the governance of Israel by challenging King Ahab and his son Ahaziah, and he participated in leading Israel back to God. In this video, I will provide you with an exclusive story of the man who revealed God's true power in a strange way in his time. Who is Elijah, and where did Elijah come from? Elijah is a revered prophet in biblical history who emerged from the mysterious region of Tishbe, Many people say Tishbe is a place in Gilead, which is where Elijah must have been born. But that's not true. When Elijah confronted King Ahab, and he mentioned his name saying, I am Elijah the Tishbite, this does not mean he was born in Tishbe. Tishbe is said to mean a visitor, a foreigner, or a sojourner among others, which means Elijah must have sojourned in Gilead, not that Gilead is his place of birth. Elijah simply said, I am Elijah the visitor or the sojourner. His first significant appearance takes us to the court of King Ahab in the northern kingdom of Israel. Ahab, a monarch swayed by ungodly influences, faced a confrontation with Elijah, a messenger of the one true God. In 1 Kings 17, Elijah boldly presents himself before King Ahab, declaring that there shall be no rain in Israel except at his word. This was the first display of God's power resident upon the life of Elijah. Elijah, by his word, shut the heavens over Israel for three and a half years. Following his proclamation of the drought, Elijah retreated to the brook Kareth, where ravens brought him bread and meat, showcasing God's provision even in scarcity. As the drought persisted, God must have thought that Elijah needed a change of diet. And the prophet Elijah, guided by God's direction, arrived in Zarephath, a city facing the grip of famine. There, he encountered a widow gathering sticks, a woman on the brink of anguish due to the dire circumstances. In an audacious yet faith-filled request, Elijah asked her for water and a morsel of bread. The widow, with only a handful of flour and a little oil left, expressed her plight, preparing to use the last of her provisions for one final meal for herself and her son before succumbing to starvation. Elijah, acting as the messenger of God, assured her that her jar of flour and jug of oil would not run dry until the drought ended. Trusting in this divine promise, the widow selflessly shared her meager provisions with Elijah. Astonishingly, her flour and oil remained plentiful, sustaining both Elijah and the widow throughout the prolonged period of scarcity. Tragedy struck when the widow's son fell seriously ill and eventually died. In her grief, she confronted Elijah, questioning if his presence had brought calamity upon her household. Responding with compassion, Elijah took the lifeless boy, laid him on his bed, and earnestly prayed to God for the child's restoration. And miraculously, 
God heard Elijah's plea, and the boy was revived, breathing new life. This remarkable event became pivotal, reinforcing the widow's faith in the God of Israel. Witnessing the revival of her son, she proclaimed Elijah as a true prophet and recognized the divine presence in their midst. The story of Elijah and the widow of Zarephath stands as a testament to the transformative power of faith, generosity, and the miraculous intervention of God in times of deepest need. After receiving instruction from the Lord to present himself again before Ahab, Elijah confronted King Ahab, who had strayed into idolatry. Gathering the people and the prophets of Baal on the majestic Mount Carmel, Elijah posed a dramatic challenge. In a riveting contest, Elijah proposed a sacrificial challenge. The prophets of Baal would call upon their god, and Elijah would invoke the god of Israel. The deity who answered with fire would be acknowledged as the supreme god. The prophets of Baal, in fervent desperation, called upon their god without success. In contrast, Elijah, invoking the god of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, witnessed divine fire consuming his water-soaked offering. This is one of the defining moments of Elijah's life. It certified to the people of Israel that God is the true God, and he is the power at work in the life of Elijah. The occurrence that follows presented Elijah telling King Ahab that rain is coming over Israel after praying fervently, and that he should hop on his chariot and hurry back to the city. The Bible records that the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah, and he ran ahead of Ahab's chariot to Jezreel, which is approximately 20 miles from where they are. This is what has made Christians reference this story when they pray to God for a speedy journey to success in life. We prayed this prayer in the church today, which is the exact day I made this video. It's a prayer you can pray for yourself and your children as well. The story of Elijah is particularly interesting because he was a prophet to the nations and a kingmaker. He had the grace to anoint men as king and to declare that the reign of one was over, meaning he did not only have relevance in spiritual arrangement, but he was also a voice in governance and politics. After God saw that Ahab had failed to lead Israel according to his will, he directed Elijah to anoint Jehu son of Nimshi as king of Israel, and Elisha had a prophet in his place. It was this Elisha who got a double portion of the power of Elijah, and at his death, his bones raised a dead man to life. After King Ahab died, according to the word of God spoken by Elijah, his son Ahaziah took over and reigned for only two years over Israel. This was equally due to a word from the mouth of the prophet Elijah instructed by God. King Ahaziah fell from his house and got injured, and he sent his servants to go and ask a foreign god, Baal, the god of Ekron and the angel of the Lord, told Elijah to meet the servants on the way and tell them to report to the king, that because he has gone after a god apart from the god is Israel, he will not recover, and the king, after hearing, sent his servants to bring Elijah for him. And this was where Elijah said, If I am a man of God, let fire fall and consume the fifty men, and the fire fell and consumed them. This is the source of the saying, If I am a man of God, of many ministers of God, when praying for the sick, or making faith declarations. This shows that Elijah carried a spiritual relevance that is echoed through generations even today. Despite these triumphs, Elijah faced moments of despair, Fleeing from the threats of Queen Jezebel, he experienced loneliness and discouragement as well. But the Lord is not slow to encourage him and provide his needs to ensure he is ready for the assignments he has for him. In the twilight of his prophetic journey, Elijah knew his time on earth was drawing to a close. Guided by a divine calling, he embarked on a farewell journey with his devoted companion, Elisha. As they reached the banks of the Jordan River, Elijah took his cloak, struck the water, and the river miraculously parted, just like the days of Moses. In 2 Kings chapter 2, Elijah's journey on earth concluded dramatically with a whirlwind and a chariot of fire, lifting him into the clouds, and he became the second man who did not taste death. His legacy endured, influencing the next prophets and leaving an enduring imprint on the narrative of God's interaction with humanity. Elijah's life is a testament to faith, resilience, and the undeniable power of the Almighty. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to share with someone who needs encouragement in their Christian journey. God bless.